you know, today uh, we are here to discuss one aspect of uh, COVID-19 impact on the transportation system, uh, its workers, its passengers, uh, the gaps that still exist uh, in protecting these workers and passengers, the lessons we've learned from the federal government's response to the pandemic so far and potential next steps to better protect transportation workers and passengers from COVID-19 and uh, other future potential health crises. Um, you know, uh, it, it's hit uh, a lot of sectors hard. Uh, uh, you know, the uh, reduction in mass transit uh, ridership, uh, aviation has led to devastating economic uh, consequences uh, for local state uh, uh, governments, transit agencies, and commercial airlines. Uh, maritime and trucking have been hit uh, variably depending upon their, uh, their lines of business, but for all, um, there have been uh, uh, consequences in terms of COVID itself. Um, the uh, transportation workers have been uh, uh, very hard hit uh, by uh, health dangers and, uh, you know, the, uh, and also uh, the financial uh, uh, repercussions of the COVID health crisis. Uh, transportation trades, which re represents a lot of these transportation workers, is sharing some of those stories online as we speak. Uh, and I would encourage people to check out COVID transportation stories on Twitter to hear even more examples of why today's hearing is so important, but only after you've sat through the fascinating hearing. Uh, I'm thankful, however, that uh, we now have a, a common sense national strategy unveiled by the Biden administration first day in office. Uh, it won't be easy. Uh, there's no immediate fix, but at least uh, uh, they put, have put in place some uh, basic national uh, consistent uh, measures. Uh, you know, uh, we uh, need uh, more PPE, obviously, maritime workers, are moving cargo through our ports, bus drivers, rail operators are helping doctors, nurses, American workers engage in combating COVID-19 to their essential jobs. Aviation is transporting uh, some of these same essential people and, uh, and uh, the, uh, the vaccines uh, by air. Uh, and, uh, you know, transportation workers in all of these modes are at a high risk of contacting COVID-19 close quarters, large number of individuals that travel and frequent trips uh, make them particularly vulnerable. Uh, truck drivers, bus drivers, delivery personnel, mechanics, engineers, maritime workers, pilots, flight crews, uh, railroad conductors have all been impacted by COVID-19 economically, socially, and medically. Many have been infected and some tragically, actually quite a few uh, have lost uh, their lives. Uh, for months, I pushed for a national mandate uh, for transportation workers and passengers, uh, but unfortunately, uh, the previous administration uh, would not impose uh, such, a, uh, such a mandate. Uh, you know, uh, flight attendants and bus drivers, when, when measures have been adopted by individual airlines uh, as rules of the airline and or by transit agencies, in local jurisdictions, flight attendants and bus drivers have been harassed, beaten, attacked while carrying out their job duties, trying to protect themselves and their other passengers from those who refuse to wear a face mask. Uh, we all owe workers uh, a debt of gratitude for their commitment and courage uh, for showing up every day uh, to keep America moving. Uh, now uh, those mandates will be backed by federal law uh, I have had conversations with Administrator Dixon. Uh, the maximum fine is $35,000 and uh, one year imprisonment, and they will be uh, for uh, egregious cases pursuing uh, those maximum fines to get the attention uh, of people. CDC just came out with guidance, which we'll get into on what constitutes a proper mask, which is going to be uh, confusing and it's going to require a lot of work uh, by the various modes to uh, get that information uh, to uh, their uh, their users, their passengers, their customers. Uh, so that's uh, you know a, a work in progress as of 
this week. Uh, I've, I've actually contacted, uh, I, I talked to uh, Chair Thompson of uh, the uh, Homeland Security Committee. We have a new memorandum of understanding with them on areas of mutual concern and interest. And I informed him that I'm uh, going to contact the head of the uh, Transportation Safety Administration and ask them to take the lead, at least in airports, on enforcing uh, this mandate. Because if people get past TSA and they get to the gate, and none of the vendors down there sell masks, uh, it becomes a big problem. Uh, you're supposed to actually have the mask on as you enter the airport. So by the time they get to TSA, they should have a proper mask on, and they should put up posters like they do for everything else we can't carry on about what kind of masks you can have, and you can't. It's, this is going to be a, a, a difficult transition. Uh, as Dr. David Michaels, the former head of uh, OSHA, uh, under the Obama administration, one of the witnesses here today has pointed out uh, Trump administration uh, steadfastly refused uh, to put forward regulations uh, to protect American workers and workforce at large. Uh, that has uh, now uh, the new uh, their OSHA is now uh, you know developing uh, individual workplace because all workplaces vary. Uh, uh, mandates and uh, requirements. Some of the states have done it individually, but it's uh, better to have a national, a national system and a national plan. You got to wear a ha hard hat when you go on a construction site, even if it's a construction site where it's not likely anything's going to fall on your head. Uh, and uh, you know, but uh, not having uh, mandatory uh, requirements uh, for something. Uh, as dangerous as COVID-19 was uh, a huge, uh, huge lack. Uh, face masks, uh, proper ventilation systems can help. Uh, we'll hear from ASHRAE today talking about that. I, I was interested in uh, some of their uh, assessment of different environments in terms of transmission, airborne transmission uh, of the virus. and. Um, I'll look forward to their testimony and the testimony of others working uh, directly uh, with the uh, with the traveling public. Um, you know, we need a massive increase in testing capacity. Uh, I have concerns that the CDC is considering a national mandate that everyone have a COVID test before uh, they uh, fly. Uh, that would mean an immediate increase of at least 50% in, uh, in daily testing capacity. And I don't know where that comes from. Uh, and furthermore, I'm not certain of its uh, effectiveness given the, even the most effective test, uh, you know, is, uh, you know, uh, is not uh, particularly accurate, uh, the PCR, it has a 100% failure rate uh, at, at uh, day one, uh, and people are most infectious uh, days minus one, minus two, and day plus one. Uh, so, um, you know, I, I just uh, question uh, whether this would be effective. And if it's necessary in aviation, <laughs> well, then I guess we'd have to worry about interstate trucking, interstate buses, Amtrak, and people are getting their automobiles and cross state lines. So uh, I hope we'll have some discussion of that uh, here today also. Uh, with that, I'd recognize uh, the ranking member for his opening remarks. Thank you, Chairman DeFazio. And 